we are at the eastern end of Darwin Airport. You can see the dark bitumen there. That's the actual end of the runway. And that's well over a kilometre and a half. This is Amy Johnson Drive, just here. So how does this compare with the other end? McDonald's block where the development is going to go ahead is within 1,000 metres, that's one kilometre, of the western end of the runway. So there are some recent developments over on this side, the other eastern side of Amy Johnson Drive. So there's no comparison with the shape? No. no. But the developers are using that as an example. They are comparing these uh, specific use areas to the um, McDonald's block one at the western end of the runway. I don't know why, I mean it's the closest, closest SDs they have, but they're really of no value in comparison because of the distance from the end of the runway. A lot of military exercises are used here. But the Singaporean Air Force, the Malaysian Air Force, and the Indonesian Air Force all use Darwin Airport for military exercises. There's growing amount of American military come into Darwin using this airport. And how would a development at the end of the runway affect that? Well, I think um, it's fairly obvious that it could be a very dangerous thing indeed and could cause an international uh, negative scenario. We've had, well, we've seen several letters on behalf of uh, Darwin Airport, the Australian Air Force, to say that it's not a good idea to build sheds or showrooms anywhere near the end of a runway such as this. Uh, those white objects are an instrument landing system only at this end of the runway. This en enables aircraft to come in on aut automatic pilot. Uh, they're very expensive setup and they, they do not have them at the other end of the runway so that in this fact this end of the runway is much safer. It's just a matter of cost. And this controls lateral and vertical approach, whereas the other end, it does not have a lateral. In other words, planes can veer off the flight path. Also, this end of the runway, the uh, end of the runway is much further away from built up areas. And as we have said, this airport is very unusual in that it is an Air Force base and a civilian airport and right in the middle of a city. So here we are at Darwin Aviation Museum. Here's the remains of a crashed Mirage jet fighter. It was crashed in 1984. This is the same type of plane as the Mirage that crashed near Dickford Drive in 1985 at the western end of the Darwin runway. Very close to the McDonald's block. These planes were, uh, I 
think five of them crashed around that time. Plus a Hornet jet fighter. These planes carried munitions. They are on exercises, but they carried munitions. And I wonder what would happen if a plane such as this, or the modern equivalent, would hit sheds and showrooms on the McDonald's block. I think this is just, this whole development is asking for massive problems, massive trouble, and I wonder who's responsible when litigation occurs. Is it going to be Jake responsible for litigation? Is it going to be the Development Consent Authority? Who is responsible? Who will actually put their hand up and be accountable? Uh, do you think it's likely that there will be more complaints about noise if there's a development in the flight path? There's the noise over the flight path is pretty bad at the moment, especially when military jets are being used. When the new military jets um, arrive, it'll be even greater. And I can't see anybody working or going to church or using a licensed club under those conditions. There's a plane coming in over lot 5182 area A, site for a licensed club, veterinary clinic, commercial development. So this is, this is the golf course at the end of the western end of the runway Darwin Air. We're on Bagot Road, we're right next to McDonald's and we're right next to a service station. So I think this illustrates quite well. You've got a McDonald's cafeteria there and you've got a petrol station right at the end of the runway right at the east-western end of Darwin Airport. Under the flight path. At the, at, under the flight path, within a thousand metres of the end of the runway. What previous development consent authority would ever have allowed those two buildings to be built in such a dangerous position? The, the people in the present application for the development of the McDonald's bush block use it as an example to say how, how it doesn't matter what one builds here. From here right down to that McDonald's sign is Lot 5182, extending behind me to Totem Road. Yeah, so this is Bunnings and a very large establishment on Bagot Road. It's been used uh, by the developers and planners as a comparison as a large showroom or shed 
usefulness is as a precedent for the future buildings that will be put on the McDonald's push block. And this would seem to be totally illogical to use it as a precedent or a comparison. It's quite a bit north of the development, isn't it's it? It's well north. And it's... The, no. You've seen some very, very small planes just go over slightly to the south of here, but nothing in the way of military planes and nothing in the way of large passenger jets. So that's flying over area B. So we're standing on the old Ritter Dixon home site, Carew Park, surrounded by lot 5182 and at the back here is area B. Uh, this area uh, Jape wants to develop, is that right David? Uh, this is surge area isn't it? This um, I'm not sure if this is primary or secondary search, but certainly just over there on the other side of Dickwood Drive is primary and secondary search, and there's a lot of water here during the wet. It does seem to me rather inappropriate to remove such a beautiful piece of native bushland as this. And the burial ground possibly. And it's, it's actually marked on the application um, on the application form as a burial ground. I've found several ironwood tree stumps that still exist in this area where I believe the poles were cut from. Why are people still destroying Aboriginal burial sites? This is an important place to the Larrakia and the Tiwi. Yes. It shouldn't be just built over. Thank you. Another aircraft approaching from over the sea, across the mangroves and monsoon forest wetland of the Kalaluk Lease, and over the savannah bushland where I'm standing. Totally no management of this lease. I mean, a terrorist could set up a rocket launcher here and no one would know. It's coming in. Lights on. This is proposed development by JAPE on Aboriginal land. And going down onto the western runway.